Can you keep Kuni Kunis for pork? Today we're going to talk about it. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwaka Cavalli Homestead. Today I am busy recording a couple of videos and I thought I will do one about keeping Kuni Kunis for pork. This is something I go into in depth in the Kuni Kuni book that I have just written, which I will link to down below. It's all about keeping Kuni Kunis on the homestead, so it's written specifically for people that are wanting to have a good homestead pig. And when I was originally first getting into Kuni Kunis, I looked long and hard for a decent book on it, and I found a lot of the stuff on Amazon was either like basically a booklet, or it was, there was one there that was just AI nonsense. It just made no sense whatsoever when you tried to read it. So I decided that I would put all the information I've got together and put it into a book for you. So I have, will put a link to it down below. So check that out. Now on to Kuni Kunis. Kuni Kunis make a great homestead pig. They're nice and small. They're easy to handle. The boars are friendly enough that you can breed your own and not be afraid of being attacked by pigs which is the big appeal for us. Um, one is getting the free pigs because we can breed our own and two, having the friendly pigs so that they're safe around the kids, right? Raising pigs for meat is really a big mental choice and particularly so when it's when you're talking about a really friendly animal. And a lot of people keep Kuni Kunis as pets and they think of keeping them as farm animals is kind of an abhorrent, not so nice idea. So for us it's a mental choice that we have made deliberately for us it makes sense but we are of the homesteading mindset and I understand that not everybody is that way inclined so if that's not you feel free to move on from this video that's okay one of the ways we've managed to get around this mind thing is that we keep our breeding trio separate from our freezer pigs and so our freezer pigs don't get loved on quite so much. They do, I mean, we're still nice to them. We're not mean. And if they want to scratch, they get a scratch. But they don't have the same affection, the same way that we get attached to the breeding pigs. Now, Kuni Kunis come in such a wide range of sizes. And they are really slow growing. Uh, so if you are wanting to raise them for meat, it's a really good idea to meet the parents if you will and see how big they are especially if they're over three or four years old and that'll give you a good idea of how big your genetics will grow because the genetic standard for um, kuni kunis can range from quite small little short things to quite large decent sized pigs so ideally if you're going to be raising them for meat you're going to be wanting to get the genetics of those bigger pigs now because kuni kunis do grow slower you'll be looking at raising them for at least 9 to 12 months before you'll even consider putting them in the freezer ours are close to 18 months old now and they are starting to look like the size that i think would be worth the effort of putting them in the freezer but if they're not costing you much if they're mostly eating grass if you're breeding them yourself it's not actually a big deal that they take longer to grow. For us, that was one of the arguments was we don't mind waiting for them to grow because they're not costing us a great deal to keep them. Now, Kuni Kunis do get fat very easily and you do want to mostly try and keep them on grass as much as possible. That's not to say that you can't use some commercial feeder pig mix for them and that will make them grow a little bit quicker. Try and feed them, read the back of the packet and try and feed them a half to three quarters of a feed ration per pig and this will help ensure that they're not getting too fat and that they're eating a decent amount of grass. Because Kuni Kunis are a lard pig, you're going to get a lot of fat from them. And so adding more food to them isn't going to grow you more pig. It's going to grow you more fat, which is fine if that's what you're aiming for. But it's not going to give you a healthy, robust pig. So what you're better off doing is just letting nature take its course, give them a little bit of extra protein feed, and then just let time do what it needs to do. Now, Kuni Kuni meat is often described as sweet. It's quite tasty. It's quite different to your commercial grain-raised, quick-growing feed um, pigs. So the stuff that you buy in the supermarket versus the stuff you grow at home will be like chalk and cheese. They're totally different products. If you're looking for that insipid grain-fed pork, then Kuni Kunis are not for you. If you're looking for a really fatty, well-marbled, tasty, um, especially really good for bacon and sausages 
then crooning crooning is the way to go. Plus, you get huge amounts of lard, which you can render down, and then you can use it for cooking and you can use it for frying. You can use it even to make soap if you want to. When it comes time for processing your pigs, when they're finally big enough, you need to book ahead uh, with the abattoir that you're planning on sending them to. Or if you're gonna do it at home, I really suggest that you get someone on board that has done pigs before to come and show you how it's done. There's nothing like learning something like that in person. Ideally, you'll have someone who knows how to shoot a pig, particularly um, ideally in the head, uh, because you want a nice, quick, clean kill. And a trick for young players is pigs, when they're eating, throw their head around a lot. So if you're wanting to keep a pig's head still, give them a nice big bowl of milk or something to be drinking. The other thing about keeping Kuni Kunis for meat is that they are really hairy, if you haven't noticed. So most people that I know of that do it, they actually skin the pigs rather than scald and scrape them. Again, that's entirely up to you. I have heard of some people choosing to scald and scrape them. It is a bit of, bigger of a job. You need a big barrel of very hot water and a proper scraping tool. Uh, but then you get a nicer product at the end. So it's entirely up to you. Pigs don't skin the same way as like a sheep or a rabbit does where they come apart really easily. You've really just got to get through with a knife and just trim it all off. So you're not going to end up with a nice beautiful carcass the same way at the other end. Uh, but this is something, it's entirely up to you which way. It depends what setup you have, how much time you've got, what skills you've got, whether you want to go with the scalding, dunking, scraping malarkey or whether you'd rather just skin them. Now I'm not going to go really deeply into um, the hows and how to do's when it comes to butchering, mostly because it's the sort of thing you actually need to watch in person. So when we finally get to that bit, I will get the camera out and uh, we'll be able to show you guys how to do that. But for now, it was more about whether Kuni Kunis are worth keeping for meat. And I think they are, as long as you adjust your expectations of what you're going to get out of them. You're not going to be getting a massive pig. You're not going to be getting supermarket sort of pork. But you are going to be getting really tasty, flavoursome, nice, well-marbled, um, quite a dark coloured pork and really tasty bacon. And no, they're not as efficient at growing, but then they're not costing you as much when you're growing them either. So for you, you just need to work out what is going to work best for you. For us, we've decided it's worth doing, so that's what we do. I hope you found this video really useful. If you have, hit the like button. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. And don't forget to check out my Kuni Kuni book that's linked down below as well. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.